I'm Claude Kelly. I'm Chuck Harmony. And we are Lewis York. Lewis York. And I'm from New York City. And I'm from St. Louis. Hence the name, Lewis York. Cool. How long have you been in Nashville? Oh, like six years now, yeah. right? Yeah. Six beautiful years. What brought you here? <sighs> That's a good, deep question. Yeah. The easy answer is that music brought us to Nashville, but the spiritual answer is that we were looking for a place to call home and New York and LA and Atlanta were no longer doing that for us anymore. So we visited here on a quest to find a place that we could plant our roots and uh, never left. So what brought us here, I think, was music, but really what kept us here was the community. When I think about my roots, I think about uh, my Christian upbringing. That's the, I think that's the most important thing that I've learned. It was my introduction to God and what spirituality is and what what life outside of myself is. And so when I think about my roots, I think about New Macedonia Baptist <laughs> Church in Centerville, Illinois. It's just, it's like that breeding ground where I first experienced spirituality. Same, but also I think of like um, my Jamaican roots. My, my family's from Jamaica. My mother is a very powerful Jamaican woman. My whole family is from there. And um, that cu the culture and the fire, the, the ambition, the music mm -hmm. um, is a big part of who I am. And that kind of leads a lot of how I live my life, especially on a daily basis, how I live at home, how I treat my body, how I treat my house. I'm very much a Jamaican man. <laughs> so I think that's a big part of who I am. I think what life has taught me um, is the, the best way to not be wrong is to keep an open mind. You know what I'm saying? You can always learn something from anybody. You know what I'm saying? And so I, that's how I approach any relationship and especially community. I think that's what it's for. It's not for you to find everybody that think and act and eat the same way you think, act and eat. It's about finding people with the same intention, intention for growth, intention for prosperity um, and exchanging ideas. And so when I think of community, I think of um, exchanging ideas and if you keep an open mind about it there's no there's no room for judgment mm. and the kind of polarizing part I feel like is a, it's really about a, per, a perspective switch because there's an easy way to like to find all the things that are wrong and where we disagree but if you actually take stock of a day everything you do in a day all the people you pass in a day that you drive past that you visit in the grocery store the majority of the day people are kind to each other mm -hmm. actually Especially in America, in, a, in our society, we have a, much more than we give ourselves credit for. And we're actually kinder and more respectful than we give ourselves credit for. So I think when it, the noise started to get so loud that it was almost to the point where everyone was literally clashing physically and hitting each other, it was healthy to remind ourselves that everyone kind of wants the same things out mm -hmm. of life. They want to be, they want a safe place to live. They want some food on their table. They want their kids to be okay. They want to have enough money to survive and you know to be able to take care of themselves and their loved ones and they want friends they want they want to have some 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 community we are social animals so it's been very helpful to 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 not allow the polarizing nature of sometimes um the loudest people in society or sometimes the news sometimes you know our rock stars all of them are very loud and they, they have, sometimes they have an agenda for being so loud but in general people for coexisting here yeah we are living. We are, for the most part, not hurting each other and being respectful of our differences. And that's worth celebrating as much as we highlight the bad stuff. I was reminded <clears throat> about that very thing when we went to uh, Disney World about a month and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And for three or four days, I was surrounded by a sea of people. You know what I'm saying? It's just like thousands upon thousands of people like cohabitating at the same time, doing the same things in the same lines. and eating at the same restaurants and it just dawned on me it's like if this many people can cohabitate then everybody is not out to get you right. everybody's not out to get everybody because it would be mayhem it would if be it was mayhem, yeah. if it was 20 bad people in that hundreds of thousands of people that I saw in that 3 or 4 day period we'd have been on the news for something bad so it just remind you know what I'm saying like he's saying a lot of the voices that get the attention are loud, but they're not necessarily responsible voices. Mm. And so, yeah, I learned that valuable lesson at Disney. <laughs>
As a creative person, I hope that the conversation of how important arts are to education comes mm -hmm. up in conversation. Yeah. Not just, oh, it'd be cool if every school had a music department, although that's the basics of it, right? But really the conversation of fundamentally how arts enhances your life. So that's the reason why it should be as important as math or science or history and English, because it's a part of how we live our lives. So you should understand in a way where you can use it as a tool to get forward, to help yourself, to heal yourself. So yeah, I hope arts in education is brought up because it's per it's important to me personally, but I think it's important to, especially children, young children, mm. you learn so much from music mm. and art. I hope that um, transformation in education is brought up. I think there needs to be some evolu evolution in what it means to be an educated person in society. Like times has changed, it's different. We need different skills, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And, and I hope in that evolution of education that the um, concept of spirituality is reintroduced in some form, in an open-minded form, in an open-minded way that just, just kind of, because kids spend so much time developing in school. And so I feel like if we have, if we have a way to just introduce the, the, the concept of spirituality to their everyday lives, and I don't know how you do that per se, but I would like to be a part of conversation and start start yeah. that process because it's important. I, I used to pray in school when I was when I was growing up, you know what I'm saying? And so that was that was something that that I think helped me. You know what I'm saying? It, it gave me some some it took me back to my roots to the church, you know what I'm saying? And so I feel like that's still an important part of education. Teachers often become parents in a lot of ways. So it's important that they're, you're getting a well-rounded life. It's not, mm -hmm. it's not even just like the, the textbook, the, the, the lesson plan, but like the life skills. That's, yeah. that, to that point, I'm just thinking about the life skills that definitely can be adjusted and, and like teach kids how to, how to pay their taxes. Like, That's what I'm teach saying. Teach kids how like to cook that, again. There should be some evolution in this thing. Like we, we're in a different society, especially coming out of the, the pandemic. It's just the world is, is yeah. different. You know what I'm saying? What kids need. Yeah, it's different. Better health education, all that stuff. We was, should was pay our teachers like, more, a lot more. They should pay our teachers more. We should pay our teachers more. That's the key right there. Yeah. Big picture thinking. I would, I would, I would like to. I would like to start a, a school. You know, I would like to be a part of of creating curriculum around what I think life skills are, and we can add the the more fundamental educational um, subjects back into the fold. But I think life skills from the age of, of seven to 18, is just, I think that's where you learn them. I think that's where you develop. And so I would like to be a part of that conversation. And, and if I had enough money, I would do that. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think a lot of people have said to us that where the workshop could be a school or an educational track or program. I don't think that was our intention when we started like putting ourselves through spiritual <laughs> training, like we were going through it and came up with this stuff. But in the process, I agree. I think that like there's skills that I've learned through life that I think I wish I'd been taught to me in school. Yeah. Um, and not just like the book smart stuff, but like we've also shunned trades, mm. things that you do with your hands, skills, um, things that I think make people proud to be who they are. And a lot of what I think the problem is is that not enough people in the school system as it is are able to find their passion that way. So you have a job, but it's not one you love. Or <clears throat> the job you love, you can't do because no one cares about it. So if we add value to all kinds of trades, and not just the artistic ones, but literally all of the trades, I feel like that's the kind of school that I would want to be supporting. The one where people can really find their mm -hmm. passion and be hands-on about it, be in nature with it. That kind of stuff is important because I think right now it's, it's standardized tests weed out so much gift, so much talent, so much creativity, and those people feel disillusioned and never really pick back up with what they really should be doing in life. Yeah, and, I, 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 and I, I feel like we gotta find a way to start teaching what you can't find on Google. Right. Because I, I do not know how, how you take That's a test, true. like all the answers to everything. Online, is, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And so I think, we, we, I think that's, that's a starting point to how you 
frame your curriculum, you, you find those things, those life skills, those um, pockets of wisdom that you can't find on Google. It's just like, we have to we have to do some due diligence because it needs to change, in my opinion. Yeah. And we need to be honest. As grown people, we need to be honest about what we did get out of the education system and what we didn't. And start with the didn't <laughs> and see where that lands. You know what I'm saying? I was watching TV the other day and I saw this uh, this fishing program and I was just thinking, I wish I'd have learned how to fish when I was a little kid because mm -hmm. it's just like, there's so much value in that. I'm pretty convinced that a lot of society's problems, and there's so many that need to be corrected, would be corrected or close to being corrected if the majority of people had a program growing up that allowed them to find what they love to do. Mm. Like for me personally, I know music is my thing, but I love music in a way where it keeps me out of trouble, mm -hmm. it keeps me disciplined, it has brought me fantastic relationships in life, it's given me self-worth. All those things that I think are really the seeds of why people are not content, why they commit crime sometimes, why they deal with mental issues. All those things are tied to lack of, and this is a, a, a touchy subject, but I think it's a, it's a lack of a full blown purpose every day that strings you through life every single day. Yeah. And there's no judgment on what that is. Mm -hmm. It's just to find that thing. And I think if schools were able to, their only goal was to help you find that thing as opposed to getting you through the system. Yeah then there'd be more people that were content when they got through the system. Yeah. I think we're the lucky ones because we knew, no one had to tell us what we wanted to do, we knew what we wanted, so it was just about staying the course. But for most people, you have to find that, and it has to be nurtured with a lot of help. So that's the point of, that's really where I think a lot of healing can happen, is if people yeah. can have the, the opportunity to find what they love. Imagine if you loved being, um, building houses. I mean, like you loved it. And if you loved being a painter, if you loved being a teacher or a musician or a plumber or none, there's, there's no, there's no hierarchy there. It's just imagine a community where people were really in their element doing what they did. Mm. Peace. I, was, I was just thinking when you said that, think about how colorful the world would be is if everyone lived a purpose driven life, just live the life that not only helps society, but help themselves. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Because to your point, like music is that thing and helped me to grow. That's how I find a lot of things, inspiration, wisdom, and understanding. Like just through this thing that I love so dearly, it just leads me places. And and at least to love too. Like, because yeah. like think about it, like, there's nothing more attractive in a friend, in a business partner, in a love interest than someone who is completely in their zone in what they love to do. Their purpose. Yeah. In their purpose. Yeah, man. It's the most attractive thing in the world. So I think that would lead to a lot more amicable relationships, <laughs> just in general. It's the most attractive thing in the world to us nerds. <laughs> to a, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, but it's the reason. It's the reason why we watch the Olympics, and yeah. it's the reason why we watch the best of everything. Is yeah. because it's inspiring to watch people in their mode, in their flow. It is, and everyone. I believe everyone's born with that gift. So, if we should be helping people find it, and that's what school should be. It should be about helping you find that in yourself. Not like carving into like some kind of cookie cutter thing that works in tandem with a society's pre-planned goal for yourself.